Okay, my name is uh, Eve Hogerforst. I'm a professor of biological psychology and I chair the acting group, the Applied Cognition Technology and Interaction Group and co-chair is Dr. Sal Albert from Social Sciences. And um, together we make up this very varied group looking at the way um, our information processing and cognitive functions interact with technology and how we can do assessments in um, particular groups of people. Um, so just to recap where we are, we're in Loughborough, uh, which is currently in the top 10. Our perspective still says we're in the top five, but we're actually in the top 10. And this is our ranking for the Good University Guide. You can see here we're in position six. And for the Good University Guide last year, we're in position eight. So we're in good company with Cambridge, Oxford, St. Andrews, Alice and Imperial. Um, and we live here right in the heart of the Midlands. So what Loughborough is about is very much an applied university. A lot of the research we do has to have meaning in the real world. And um, I think acting is very much part of that applied approach. So um, our mission statement um, is that we try to focus on mental health. Uh, for this day, we focus on dementia, but this is also viewed in a wider context. We also uh, investigate, uh, for instance, design for people with other mental health issues. Um, we're looking at students and mental health provisions. We've been very active during COVID. Uh, looking and monitoring people's mental health on campus and off campus. What ACTING is really focused on is technology design and assessments. And with the sole focus on quality of life and independence for people who suffer from mental health problems and dementia. And one of the um, main topics, which is where social sciences and a lot of our uh, members come into uh, from sports and exercise and health sciences, is how we can assess this. So how can we actually capture what people, sorry, I'm not looking at the audience at all, I'm looking at my screen because that's where I am. Hello audience, the audience is there, we're jam-packed. I mean, it's absolutely full, no social distancing whatsoever. So, uh, no, we are, we are. Yeah, obviously, we're very social. I, I wish you could kind of turn around to see how widely spread apart everybody is. So what we're trying to do is, um, because sometimes people view it as difficult to communicate with people with dementia and people with other possible communication needs, we've done lots of projects with learning disability, with people with mental health in general. And that requires sometimes a different approach. It requires looking at other aspects. So we've come together, all the people are looking at this on campus and outside of that are, are looking at this within this group. And that sounds a little bit abstract. So I'll introduce the individual members. Uh, well, that's me. Um, I'm the director for dementia research at Loughborough. Uh, my main area of research is early diagnostics, preferably non-invasive using technology, uh, looking at optimizing design, perhaps design for diagnostics, but mainly to allow people to live independently. And uh, we also look at risk and protective factors for dementia. So we're not so much interested in medication, but rather in lifestyle aspects. So for instance, we're currently looking uh, at a project uh, at the effects of, of concussion in football players. So that, does that increase dementia risk? Uh, one of our PhDs, Maria Goodwin, is involved in that, and I'll talk more about her in a second. Uh, and we also have Alexandra Gower, who looks at the effects of alcohol abuse. Now, alcohol abuse is um, quite a big topic. It often starts in students. It's part of the whole, you know, being out there with the peer group, drinking. And at most universities, alcohol abuse is quite rife. And people suffer from this. It affects their uh, uh, mental health. It affects their um, 
study performance, and most importantly, perhaps for this group, is behavior that is learned and is carried over through an older age. And uh, Tom Wilcoxon and myself have been very fortunate to supervise Alexandra Gower, who has used physical activity and other distraction techniques to reduce alcohol cravings in students. And she's done that successfully. She's now at the end of her program, uh, but uh, we're, very, we're very proud. She's done a great job with that. So Alexandra is also part of this acting group um, and, and will move uh, to London after her PhD. Now, one of the, we, we have projects all over the world. And one of the things we really focus on is whatever is bad for the heart is bad for the brain. So if we look at this, uh, we, we are really fortunate. We've had three excellent new lecturers join us in the School of Sports, Exercise and Health Sciences. And two of these are interested in hearing loss and how that pertains to cardiovascular disease and dementia. So we've been very lucky. Uh, one is Christian Fulgrab, and he is working with a PhD student who's starting, Rosie Daly. She should hopefully be on the call. And Rosie will be looking uh, for her PhD, among other things, at how these vascular, these heart disease risk factors impact on hearing loss, how hearing loss then impacts on speech perception. So when we're testing people with dementia, when we're assessing people with dementia, how does that hearing loss affect their performance? How does that affect memory loss? Um, David Maitman, uh, also excellent lecturer, uh, also we, we were able to uh, uh, hire in the last couple of years, also interested in hearing loss, and with his PhD student, Maria Goodwin, who is also doing the work with concussion with us, he is looking at how hearing loss affects engaging in those physical and mental activities that can reduce the risk for heart disease and for dementia. What Maria and David found was that people with hearing loss often don't engage. There are many barriers for people to engage in, in, in activities. Uh, there is an enormous stigma. It's difficult when there's background noise. So this is what they're looking at. Um, David has a combination of qualitative, so looking at conversation analysis, as well as quantitative expertise. So we're very lucky. Why look at hearing loss? Well, hearing loss increases your risk for dementia twofold. And um, conversely, people who have even moderate hearing loss are three times at a high risk for developing dementia. And if you have severe hearing loss, that might increase to a factor five, according to some data, of course, there's many different data out there. But what it means is that hearing loss is definitely associated with dementia. Perhaps it's in the assessment, perhaps it's because people don't engage in the activities to prevent dementia. But that's something that Rosie and Maria will hopefully look at. Um, then Tom Wilcoxon, working together with Agnes Beckler, are looking at uh, visual sensitivity loss. Uh, um, Tom is an expert in eye movements and how that relates uh, to dementia. Uh, for those of you who attended the early meeting, um, there are many aspects in dementia which are related to uh, different visual disturbances from perhaps an increased risk for cataract, we don't exactly know, to the actual cells that are associated in the brain with visual processing. And one of the things uh, Tom and, and Ahmed and myself are looking at is how these movements of the eyes regulated by the brain uh, affect engaging in physical activities, but also if we affect these eye movements, can that then affect cognitive performance, activities of daily life, Etc. So that's a really exciting PhD. Uh, Ahmed is funded by uh, the Turkish government. So we're very, very lucky uh, to have him. He's already done a tremendous job and he will be presenting about his work uh, in, in a bit. Then um, Manisha Jane, uh, together with 
Ahmed Aladawi and Barbara Balakatingan, who I'll talk about in a second, are all part of a Dunhill Medical Trust Fund, which we got, and which paid these three PhD students to look at how we can develop homes where people are active, where people feel comfortable, and how to develop guidelines for the build of these homes. So Manisha is looking at diagnosis both within the house as well as using tests and again also looking at how physical exercise affects these functions and can improve uh, these functions in people with dementia can reduce the risk for dementia. Why do we keep on hammering home about physical activity and other activities? Because that's the only thing that's currently shown to reduce the risk for dementia across the lifespan. So starting from childhood to adolescence, to once people even have dementia, it can still prevent progression. It's one of the most important factors. And of course, because at Loughborough, we're known for sports and exercise sciences. Um, so as I said, Barbara Balakating Dunn is working with Professor Sue Hignett and Professor Malcolm Cook on developing these dementia guidelines. She's an architect by background. Uh, she's already done her master's in this. So that is really a very useful background to work together with designers, with people with dementia to come up with these guidelines from the work that we've done before and the work that we're currently doing. So we're very lucky that Barbara is part of our team and helping people to develop these dementia-friendly designs. Then, uh, as I said, Ahmed Aladawi is uh, part of our indoor environment, working with myself and Professor Malcolm Cook to create the optimal indoor environment. Um, Ahmed has already shown that people with dementia need sli slightly higher temperature uh, to have optimal functioning. And his work is very important in linking into the work with Ahmed and Manisha in when we're active in the home, how can we create that optimal indoor environment? So how can we work with automated systems with sensors to keep people happy? And then uh, Dr. Alison Khan works at Oxford and Stanford. She's a visiting researcher working with digital technology and helping us uh, with learning in children and in people with dementia. So we're very lucky. Alison has, has an anthropology background and a digital media background. So she can help us incorporate these different technological aspects um, in our work, in our wider work as a group. Um, and then there are uh, the people from the discourse of rhetoric group, DA, um, led by my co-chair, uh, Dr. Sal Albert. And uh, Sal, do you want to say something about DA? Sure, I'd love to. And so thank you very much, Eve, for this introduction. Um, I will say that we, uh, that's myself, Felicity Slocum and Lauren Hall, from whom you will hear today about their research, um, are members of the Discourse and Rhetoric Group, which is a venerable institution at Loughborough that has been running um, an interaction analysis session every Wednesday afternoon since 1985. So I think that's something to be proud of. It is also quite fun. It's not just, we don't just do it out of habit, um, but it's one of the world centers, I think probably only uh, paralleled by UCLA for conversation analysis um, and uh, ethnomethodology. Um, and it's the home and uh, place in which discursive psychology was founded some years ago. So this is very much the applied study of social interaction um, and how it relates to institutional settings, healthcare interactions, um, and myself and many of our colleagues at the Discourse and Rhetoric Group are involved in, in acting. So I hope that's a brief introduction. Google it and you'll find out more about DARG than you ever wanted to know. Thank you so much. Uh, that was interesting how I arose from my chair uh, into the screen. Um, so um, Sal is um, a, um, sort of um, accompanied uh, from DARG by uh, Professor Liz Peel, who will give one of our keynotes. Uh, Liz is a very well-known uh, dementia expert. We've done projects together looking at conversation analysis and, and having 
assessment of people with dementia doing a walking and talking experiment, which was really uh, interesting with, with our combined PhD student, John Elliott King, who is now a lecturer at Northampton. So we're very, very proud of, of, of Jordan. She came straight out of PhD, became a lecturer, and she did a great project. Um, a lot of the work that we do is combined qualitative, so that's from the dark group, they're, they're experts in that, and some of the people within our group, like David, uh, Maitland, obviously, and, and Maria Goodwin, and, and also some of the other PhDs like Manisha, um, are, are very well versed in this. But within DARC, there are two particular PhDs, I'll talk about this a little bit more uh, when um, we, uh, we, we start with the project, and one is Felicity, Felicity Slocum, looking at identity and dementia and how that is represented within conversations and within media. So she analyzes the conversations to uh, identify how people speak about identity within dementia and how that changes over the past. And then the other is Lauren Hall. Uh, Lauren um, looks at the interaction with people with dementia in care settings and using assistive technology. So as you can see, all the people kind of link into one another. They all have uh, individual expertise uh, to add to this group um, because you can't do everything by yourself. So we're very lucky that we have people with a varied background uh, to help us tackle quite complicated problems. Like one of the problems we're talking about today is the uh, uh, specialist uh, dementia uh, facilities and uh, other projects that we'll be talking about in the future. We've had a really good uh, first session. I know, I'm seeing half eight now. Yeah. There's a couple of things I need to get actually. Uh, sorry, one of you isn't mute. Love you, babes. Love you. See you there. Love you. Love you. Sarah, you are not muted. Sarah, 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 Sarah. I'll try and work out what channel you get on the radio to listen to these matches. We want to what we want to wait for wins tonight, aren't we? All right. All right. Thank um, you. Yeah. Okay. Good. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, I can actually mute Sarah too. So, um, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, so, this was the introduction to um, our group, and we're very grateful for everybody who's joined us. And uh, I think we're almost set to um, start with our keynote speaker, uh, Mike Kane, who is uh, the primary research fellow at MindTech. And MindTech, he'll probably be able to tell you a little bit more about this himself. He's been uh, working with MindTech and uh, Professor Tom Denning for a very long time, working with technologies developed for people with dementia, assistive technologies in particular, and how they can improve quality of life and independence. Now, this is not easy work. They've, they've been doing this for a very long time. We um, have collaborated with them on, on various proposals, and we hope that they'll be involved. They're involved as an advisory group, MindTech, uh, for uh, the specialist uh, dementia facility um, to come in later to, to give us advice uh, from that uh, perspective. Um, Okie dokie. I don't know if Mike is available yet. I'm here. Yeah, I've got my slides. I, I could go anytime. Would Would you be able to? That would be That would be great. Then we can run a little bit later, maybe for some questions as well. Thanks, um, Eve. If you could stop sharing your screen, Eve, then Mike can Mike can share yeah. his. Thanks. Stop sharing. Yeah, cool. 